Experience the excitement right here. Right here. Right, 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 right here on Trax FM. With more than 500 species of flora and fauna. It's Southeast Asia's only tropical spice garden. Visit Penang 98.7. This is Trax FM, and it's time for Face to Face with your host, speaking to today's panelists. Face to Face, exclusively on Trax FM. Welcome to this week's edition of Face to Face. As usual, it's Kong Yu on the Thursday program of Momentum, bringing you the special feature that happens every Thursday at 11.15 plus <laughs> right here on the show. Yeah. So today I'll be speaking to my special guests on a very uh, important aspect, actually, for all of us as Malaysians, the uh, Malayan tiger per se, right? Save a tiger is the topic today and here... Uh, with uh, her presence and also uh, her information and knowledge and also advice. Uh, Kanita Krishnasamy, who is the Director for Southeast Asia of Traffic, uh, joins us today uh, via the phone lines and indeed also uh, via the uh, Facebook Live uh, medium as well. So we are also live at Track 7 Official. If you like a visual cue in as to the interview as well as to join us visually there and your chance to also comment or have a question for Kanita, well, that's the best way to get clued in, right? So we're both live on air over the airwaves and also at Track 7 Official on Facebook right now, right? So thank you so much for being with us, Kanita. Good morning. Good morning, Kong. Good hey. to be here. Yeah, uh, and uh, thank you for taking time out to be with us, yeah? Um, so... As we have found out for the uh, past couple of weeks, right, in terms of the tabling of Budget 2022, the go government is allocating 450 million ringgit for next year, 2022, to fund initiatives such as nature conservation projects, programs to empower local communities to act as biodiversity guardians, assistance for zoo operating costs, uh, a 100 million tree planting campaign, assistance with operating costs for zoos, also to intensify the breeding of Malayan tigers. That's an interesting one, right? Uh, in fact, on top of the implementation of a frozen zoo program as well. Yeah? Uh, so as we get started, so what is your reaction overall to all these allocations and to the overall tabling of Budget 2022? Right, so I suppose the, the positive thing here is that it's great that there is going to be an investment in terms of protecting the uh, habitats and the tigers on the ground from the perspective of putting Warangaki ranges and patrolling. That's absolutely great because, you know, if you want to protect your species, you have to protect the habitat. Um, and the best way to do that is to make sure that you've got enough boots on the ground. So absolutely spot on. Um, and in fact, that's exactly what a lot of conservation organizations have been pushing for for a really, really long time. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when you look at the, the figure itself, um, you know, 450 million sounds like a lot, but, you know, when you talk about the scale of the issues, when yep. you're talking about habitats and people and animals, it, it's not a, a great amount. But mm. it's good, you know, we're operating under strange economic and sociopolitical situations right now. Um, so it's great that that investment at least is there. Um, the specifics, I think, will have to be wait and seen because we, we don't have a lot of the specifics. You know, the devil is always in the details. Exactly. But when you're looking at some of the issues um, like breeding and frozen zoos, it does raise some alarm bells. Um, breeding is a very, very controversial issue for tigers. Um, it's been one of the longest standing issues with the international debate. Uh, in conventions like CITES that, you know, is, is an international convention that governs the trade of animals and plants for commercial purposes. Mm. And tiger breeding and captive facilities, more specifically, has long been debated. Um, and the debate is around the validity of, of these facilities. Mm. Are they actually having um, a positive conservation impact for wild tigers? Um, and more concerningly, are they actually encouraging facilities taking illegal operations. Mm. A lot of the discussions around that at the global scene right now um, is quite focused on the Mekong countries um, and, and China because these are the countries that have had this facilities for a really long time. Malaysia is not part of that discussion right now. So we don't want to end up in a situation where Malaysia does become part of 
the, the discussion and the debate around those issues. So for us, I think at the Malaysian stance, it's very important to understand um, why this is being prioritized, how it is going to be managed, and more importantly, we have to make sure that we're not left with a burden further down the road mm. because caring for animals in captivity is very, very costly. Um, and is that taking away resources from protecting tigers in the wild? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so glad we're talking about this because to me, you know, like as I'm going through, uh, you know, what's been tabled here, and of course, a summary that my producer has prepared here as well in terms of the, you know, the efforts to, to do, actually do that. So it's certainly raising my eyebrow as well. I'm like, is that the best way to do things now? Maybe to put that in context, right? Let's talk about the Malayan tiger for, to catch our friends mm-hmm. up uh, who may not be so familiar with the issue, although I'm sure many people are, right? But let's talk about that. The Malayan tiger, why is it being the target of poachers in the first place? So it's not just Malayan tigers. It's really all tigers that are being targeted. Mm-hmm. Um, there are parts, every, almost every single part of them is used uh, for trade illegally. Um, we've looked at the, the trade, illegal trade tigers for many, many years. Um, and the two sort of parts that feature very, very prominently are skin and bone. Um, the bones particularly are being used for medicinal purposes. And uh, we've, we've done a lot of work across the Southeast Asian region and in some markets across Southeast Asia, you find tiger products openly for sale. Mm. We don't have such markets in Malaysia, but we are an important source. Um, countries like um, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Thailand, for example, are very, very important source for tigers uh, in Southeast Asia. And so they become targeted because we've got a good source of tigers. But, you know, if you've been reading the narrative over the last decade or so, you know that our tigers are actually not doing so great. Um, we've got less than 200 tigers. Um, and I think, you know, when, we, when, when as a country we're looking at issues like breeding and frozen tigers, that in itself mm-hmm. raises some alarm bells. You know, I think it, people have to understand that when we're having these discussions, it means that we're trying to put plan B and C into action mm-hmm. because the tigers in the wild are not doing so well. Uh, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, the crux is... It almost sounds like we might be taking, a, I don't know, like an easier route for now, right? As of now, I'm not sure. So maybe this um, this uh, answer to this question, you know, will uh, be there, you know, as we go along further with the interview. But maybe not. Right? Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Um, now it's important for the Malayan tiger to be protected from so many aspects, right? So it's not just. Uh, you know, the fact, obviously, the key key thing is that the fact that they are going, you know, they're disappearing, right? going extinct, if I just use that word loosely, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but also because it forms such a key part of our Malaysian identity overall. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's really been the, the biggest push for conservation organizations, and including the government, right? I mean, we've had this, this target action plan, mm-hmm. and when it first came out in 2008, it was, it was hailed as one of the best laid plans to protect tigers anywhere across its range. Mm. Fast forward 13 years, we're in a situation where we're sort of thinking of plan B and plan C, right. while still trying to figure out what else can we do to protect the tiger. Mm-hmm. So we have we have the, the, the basic ingredients, I guess, right? We've got anti poaching patrols, we've got governments um, upping the game in terms of making sure that uh, patrols are, on, uh, are happening, uh, enforcement is being ramped up. But the question is, are we doing enough? Mm-hmm. Um, and all of this is great, you know, when when your tigers are, are targeted on the ground, you want to make sure that you protect them, you protect your home. But, where do you, but what, what, what do you do when your home is already compromised? Um, mm. with, the, with the assumption being that poachers are already in our forest, what do you do then? We have to weed them out. So it's not just about addressing the hunting and the poaching issues. We also have to address the illegal trade issue. So the two have to work hand in hand. And we've seen cases, um, you know, police and the wildlife department have actually been going after a number of these culprits. Arrests are being made. But it seems like we're still not winning the game. You know, tigers are still ending up in illegal trade. Um, We're seeing a lot of poachers in our forests. And these poachers are both Malaysians and foreign nationals. How can we stop this problem from persisting in the long term? We have to identify who these individuals are. And we, and by that, you know, I mean not just sort of stopping the investigation and the effort when somebody is being arrested. Mm. 
um, because they're not one individual. They are several individuals along an entire trade chain from source to market. These individuals that are in Malaysia, who are they supplying to? Are they Malaysian? Mm. Um, are they foreigners? Are they supplying to international markets? So all, all of these questions need to be answered and we have to get better at sort of getting one step ahead of the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, thanks for the response there. Would you say that the biggest threat to the wild Malayan tiger are poachers or is there more to it? Because you also mentioned, of course, the encroachment into the uh, natural, uh, you know, the, 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 the natural jungle and the forest and so on. The biggest threat to tigers worldwide right now absolutely is uh, poaching for trade. Okay. Um, you know, the habitat issues are always going to be there. And I think perhaps, um, you know, for countries like Malaysia and, and Indonesia and Thailand, where we still have a lot of land, mm-hmm. there's always going to be this, this debate between how much do we keep and how much do we do we log or convert. That's always going to be an issue. Mm-hmm. But as it stands, we actually do have... Uh, a good base of habitat for tigers. So the habitat issue is actually not the primary issue. Mm -hmm. The primary issue still is poaching. In some cases, the habitat conversion issues and the land use issues are a little bit more concerning than others. Mm -hmm. But still, we've been saying for a really, really long time, we have to stop the poaching in the illegal trade. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get you to hold that thought there. I want to, um, of course, uh, get more to that as well as from your perspective, Kanita. You know, what's the best uh, uh, situation to move forward from your perspective, right? We're going to take a very short breaker here. Going to get you to hold the line. And we'll be back with my guest today as the Director for Southeast Asia at Traffic, Kanita Krishnasamy, right here on uh, Face to Face for today, the edition dated Thursday, 11th November 2021. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Face to Face, we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned to know more about today's topic exclusively on Trax FM. Have a stroll down the Telok Kemang Beach and delight in the botanical treasure of Tanjung Tuan. Port Dixon, Negeri Sembilan, 101.3 Tracks FM. Welcome back to the second half of today's Face to Face with your Sudi Kong, you on the mic, uh, and joined via the phone lines and over the uh, video lines, shall we say, my guest Kanita Krishnasamy, who is the Director for Southeast Asia at Traffic, uh, who joins us for the discussion today on uh, Malayan Tiger, how we can save uh, tigers and uh, uh, related uh, issues as well, yeah, concerning the Malayan Tiger. Thank you so much for being with us, Kanita. Thanks, Kanita. Right. Uh, for those who are just joining us right now at the moment, by the way, we are available not just via the airwaves, but also at Tracks FM Officials Facebook uh, for the feed today. So if you have a question for Kanita, if you'd like to uh, also maybe, of course, have a visual cue in as to what's happening for this interview, do join us at Tracks FM Official. Yeah, uh, Kanita, I would just like to get you to introduce uh, us and get us reacquainted with Traffic. Go ahead. Sure. Yep. Uh, well, Traffic is, is an international NGO and we, we're, we're a pretty niche organization in that we are we are focused in addressing the issues around trade. Um, It's both about addressing illegal trade as well as um, issues of legal and sustainable trade. Um, So that's really the the core of our work. In Southeast Asia, we've been um, based here in Malaysia since 92, um, and we cover the entire Southeast Asian region. And a huge part of our program in Southeast Asia is dedicated to addressing illegal wildlife trade. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, we do hear of uh, reports as well as highlights in the media from time to time, as well as, of course, from traffic, uh, your side, yeah? Let's talk about the illegal wildlife trade. Uh, How rampant is it? Uh, We know that, unfortunately, I think we're at a major transit uh, point as well, yeah? And also, uh, how bad is it when it comes to tigers? So I think Southeast Asian countries really... uh function as multiple roles and really all three roles as as stock because mm-hmm. we have great and high biodiversity. We are also a major consumption region, uh, including Malaysia. Um, and when I say consumption, it's not just for food, um, for life, pets, um, parts and products being used for traditional medicine, mm-hmm. for trophies and trinkets. Um, and as you said earlier, you know, we are also a pretty important uh, transit region. Um, Southeast Asia as a region, but also Malaysia for a whole 
range of different things, including ivory, tangling parts, rhino horns, and timber, and you know, all sorts of other parts and products. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us how, how bad is it when it comes to the trade of uh, tiger parts? I suppose in a summary, it's very, very bad mm -hmm. because we're not seeing in Southeast Asia and particularly in countries like Malaysia, we're not seeing the wild order numbers rebounding. Um, we've heard from governments and in you know, all the conservation NGOs that over the last 10 years, we've sort of been moving into the situation where things are getting more and more critical. Mm -hmm. um, every year, the narrative gets, gets more concerning, gets more, um, more critical and we know that things are not improving because tigers continue to be hunted and traded illegally. Um, we are seeing, you know, the official numbers from governments as part of the National Tiger Survey. It puts us at, at less than 200. And now less than 200 sounds like it's a lot. Unfortunately, it's not because it, it can wipe out a population very, very quickly um, if we don't take immediate steps to stop the poaching and to stop the illegal trade. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of pressure is, is now on Malaysia to see what we can do to stop that poaching and, and illegal trade. Um, over the next year and a half, tigers are going to be quite high in the agenda. Malaysia is in fact hosting a number of international meetings to address the issue of uh, protecting tigers, safeguarding tigers, looking mm -hmm. at how to stop the poaching, um, how to safeguard tigers from threats like illegal trade. So, and next year is also an important meeting internationally for CITES, which is the convention that looks at the trade of, of uh, animal parts and uh, it, for commercial purposes. Mm -hmm. And these are issues that are going to be very, very important. So what we do over the next 12 months plus is going to be absolutely crucial. Um, and, you know, we... we spoke earlier about what has been tabled for the budget for the country. We have some ideas, we have some steps, we've got the funding that has been allocated by the Malaysian government. I think the question really is how much more can we do and how much can we get ahead of the game to make sure that the poaching and the illegal trade issues can be spent. Can we identify the individuals that are already in Malaysia that are perpetuating the issue. Mm -hmm. um, can we identify the culprits? Can we, and it's not just about identifying the culprits. How do we put actions into place to make sure that, you know, it doesn't perpetuate and that others don't fall um, and do the same thing in the future? And mm -hmm. that, what I mean by that is, can we prosecute them to the, to the full extent of the law? Mm -hmm. We've heard, you know, the discussion in Parliament over the last um, few weeks that Malaysia does have a pretty good, strong law um, in Peninsula Malaysia where the Wildlife Conservation Act is concerned. The fines are being increased. Um, you know, the issue of illegal trade and, and poaching is prioritized by law. So we've, we've got a great recipe. I think everyone's just sort of waiting to see what can we do, how much better we get at actioning these issues on the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's more on, definitely from what I understand from you, is that it's more the uh, action uh, that is the key, isn't it? Would you say that there are other challenges overall, uh, major challenges in terms of monitoring, uh, being on top of the illegal wildlife trade? I mean, it, 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 it is uh, immense, right, in terms of uh, the overall context of monitoring per se. I mean, that's, that's a tough, it's a tough one. It is because, you know, we're talking about hundreds and thousands of kilometers of forest. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the Malaysian government has invested quite a bit in terms of figuring out what's going on on the ground. Um, and National Tiger Survey was initiated a few years ago. And it was not just about, you know, figuring out how many tigers we have in the wild. Part of that is about making sure that boots were on the ground. So that National Tiger Survey was actually a great initiative because... Mm -hmm. It enabled us to figure out how many tigers were there in the world, but at the same time, it enabled the Malaysian government to put boots on the ground. Um, because when you're going out there into the fields in the forest, you're not just sort of trying to figure out, you know, where tigers are. You've got people on the ground mm -hmm. who are actively also protecting their habitat, which means they're actively also contributing towards making sure the tigers are not being poached. But you know, through that effort, it was, it was quite clear that the threat to tigers on the ground is, is quite severe. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of snares were, were um, picked up. Illegal poaching camps were identified across across the peninsula and across um, a lot of 
habitats and you know these are habitats that are not just important for tigers mm. uh, of so many other animals depend on them you've got pangolins you've got sun bears you've got leopards you've got um, you know species that are food for tigers that mm. are also being targeted mm -hmm. your deer species your pig species so it, it's part of a, a complex problem and that's why you know we're always saying it's not just about protecting tigers when you protect tigers you protect a lot more on the ground that depend um, on having safe habitats yeah. Uh, in fact, I mean, for completeness' sake, let's um, let's talk a bit about, about that, right? The Malayan tiger, of course, relies on healthy prey species, like you were saying, and um, a lot of these species also are poached. Um, can you share with us, um, you know, the context of that, and, and how how severe is that? Uh, is the problem as in like it's actually due to the prey, which are actually uh, being poached, and hence uh, the tiger isn't able to to I guess uh, have a steady supply of its food. Absolutely. I mean, the, the hunting of um, deer species has been a problem for a really long time. In mm -hmm. fact, that was one of the reasons why the wildlife department actually took a pretty important stance, um, I think it was back in 2009, when they uh, put the samba deer um, and the barking deer on a totally protected list, mm. which means, you know, these are the two sort of priority food sources for the tiger. Um, and they put it on the totally protected list, meaning that you cannot hunt um, for for any purposes. And so, you know, as I said earlier, we, we're making the right steps in some in some way, but we're still not stopping the problem. Um, so it's not just about making sure that the tigers are protected. Equally, we also have to make sure the tiger the tiger has enough food um, in the wild to survive. Um, this is, is really part and parcel of, of an overarching problem that you know agencies like Pangilitan and the Ministry are looking into, mm -hmm. uh, and that absolutely has to be part of part of the solution that um, Tigers need. Yeah, well, thank you uh, for that comment. Yeah. Now, overall, case for all of us who are listening in, we're not, you know, out, uh, you know, being able to in a way actively participate. Uh, as in, like monitoring, you know what happens uh, goes on in the Malayan jungle, Malaysian mm -hmm. jungles, and so on. What can we do? I mean, what can the public do to to try to actively participate in helping to curb the illegal wildlife trade in Malaysia? Honestly, I think you know one of the greatest things we can do is is to speak up, um, because hmm. you know the, the voice of the people is really really strong, um, and you know when we're talking about sensitive and, and somewhat risky issues like protecting tigers because we're talking about people who are in the forest with snares and firearms. So mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, anybody from you know, the public can, can participate in such efforts because right. they are the most sensitive issues. Um, and so we have to make sure that the government has the ability and the resources and the skills and the expertise to do what needs to be done. And the best way to do that is to give them that voice, that support. And I think this is where, you know, the Malaysian voice becomes really, really important because it's not just about making sure that the government, you know, is given the resources and the skills. Mm -hmm. It is about protecting the Malaysian icon. Mm. You know, the Malayan tiger is, is such an important part of Malaysian history. It's on the national emblem. You know, every time a football match is, is on the ground, everybody's talking about, you know, Harima Malaya. But do we really understand what that means to us as society? We've got the tiger in the forest right now. How long more can we keep the tiger? We, when we're having discussions about frozen zoos and captive breeding, mm -hmm. it's all very, very concerning. And I think maybe you know that that importance, that significance, doesn't really resonate across the Malaysian society, and that really has to happen. So the education bit has to happen. I think people have to read up and sort of be aware about the issues that are taking place out there where tigers are concerned. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I can't, I can't stress this enough, really use the voice for the tiger because that's absolutely crucial and we have to get politicians and decision makers to come on board. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the federal government putting money aside for the budget. A lot of the habitats that we're talking about is under state jurisdiction. Um, you know, land is a state issue. Mm -hmm. uh, how forests are being managed is absolutely under the purview and the decision of state governments. How can we compel state governments to also look into habitat issues and how habitat should be better managed and protected? It's not just about, you know, the federal government putting boots in the ground to make sure that the tiger is protected. 
what else can state governments do to make sure that the habitat that is under their management, their jurisdiction and their control and power mm-hmm. is better protected? That absolutely has to be part of the discussion as well. Okay. A point taken on the emphasis here on, on you know, basically part A that we all need to you know, beef up on right. It's not a it's it's a monumental task. It's challenging, but that's where uh, I, I feel that the effort should be concentrated on. But would you feel that it is too premature for for uh, Plan B and Plan C as we're talking about the breeding, so called breeding of the Malayan tiger, the frozen zoo, and all that? What's what's your concluding thought on that? I think it, it really comes down to where we want to invest in immediate priorities and you know for for many of us it's like here if we're going to be spending millions in plan b and plan c and that millions would benefit plan a which Mm. is protecting the tiger right now on the ground then i think that really needs a a serious uh, reconsideration how much we want to invest in plan b and c and how much we proportionate that for plan a is absolutely crucial right now so I mean, we've, we've had this discussion for many, many years now. I think the question about captive breeding uh, needs a serious uh, thinking, too, mm-hmm. in, in terms of what is the actual benefit to tigers in the wild? Can it protect tigers in the wild? And if the idea is about reintroducing tigers in the wild in the future, mm-hmm. that only works if your problems are stemmed, meaning poaching and trade is stemmed. So even, you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, if we're talking about reintroducing tigers, is that because the original threat, which is poaching, is stopped from the forest? Because if you don't stop that from happening, mm-hmm. whatever you introduce in the future is still going to be under immense threat. Mm-hmm. So I think in all of these discussions, um, all of these considerations really, really need to be thought through properly. Mm-hmm. Well said. Thank you so much for that comment. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, how can the public go and where can they go for more information on traffic and activities and also, um, uh, I guess, the calendar of events? Well, we've got our social media sites like everyone else. You know, check out our website, mm. www.traffic.org. Um, we also have a Facebook page. We've got an Instagram page. Um, many of us within the, the traffic team have Twitter accounts. We very, very often put out news about what's going on across the region. We've got quite a bit of work going on in Malaysia. So not just about tigers, you know, I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. um, live animal trade. The bird trade issue is, is very, very big. If you're following social media pages of Perilitan, for example, you would have seen that they are doing a lot of arrests. They are doing a lot of enforcement. And there are many, many Malaysians who are actually going to the forest and catching live birds for trade as well. Mm. So there's a lot that the public can do. As I said earlier, educate yourself. Um, and one of the best things that you can do is actually report a crime if you feel that a crime has been committed. You don't have to verify that crime. Even if you feel that a crime may have happened, um, there are opportunities for you to actually reach out to organizations like Traffic. Um, MyCat is another one that has a hotline. Uh, Pohilitan also has a hotline. All of this information is available online on the um, on the Pohilitan website, on the Traffic website, and on the MyCat website. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, that brings us to the conclusion and wrap of today's interview. Uh, I appreciate you taking your time out, Kanita, to be with us. Thanks, Kanita. Yeah, welcome. Take care. Right, all the best uh, with uh, your work at Traffic. Yeah? Thanks, Kanita. Bye. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's a wrap for today's Face to Face, uh, the edition dated Thursday, 11th November 2021, dedicated to the Malayan Tiger. And uh, yeah. Much more headed your way all day long still right here on Trax FM and of course this show Momentum. So make sure you keep it tuned right here on Trax FM. That's all the time we have for today's Face to Face. We'll be back next week with your host speaking to the panelists discussing interesting topics. Join us next week Face to Face exclusively on Trax FM.